One of the most difficult challenges we have in our indie game Wisplight is to make our game as optimized as possible. Working on a game that has demanding graphics with a lot of assets rendering on our screen is a pain. So with this in mind, my goal is to design Wisplight with optimization as first priority without compromising the art and graphics. And today I will share one of my many optimization features that I made to make Wisplight as light as possible while maintaining its graphical qualities. We will be talking about spawners and some introduction to object pooling. Just a disclaimer though, I didn't have any prior knowledge of game development when I started this indie game project, nor have any educational backgrounds about making a game. So all these features that I made are from my experience as I face the challenges making my game. I'm not even sure if I'm doing it right. I just work on what's working and fix things that are not. So forgive me if I'm doing something wrong. I'm a novice to game development with little to no experience at all. Anyway, for those of you who are new here, I'm June and I'm making this game with Splight. It's a reverse RPG where we play as the monsters instead of the usual RPG heroes that we play. The goal for our game is to eliminate human settlers invading and exploiting resources from our island home. If you're interested in following our development, feel free to subscribe to get updated. Let's begin! So to start understanding the behaviors of spawners, let's first talk about the types of objects we have in our scene. First, we have the static objects, which are the terrain and the object in the terrain that doesn't move or doesn't need interaction with the player. Then we have interactables, namely the enemies that we fight, the objects that we use or pick up, or any objects that we interact with. These interactable objects, if placed in the world, have many components in them like colliders, animators, AI nav agents, and a lot of scripts. And having these components in the scene, even though you can't see them or they're not in front of you rendered, will cause you performance running them in the background. So with this in mind, what I did is to make only one of these objects and only spawn them when needed in the scene. This way, there are no unnecessary scripts or other components running in the background, hence spawners. Basically, we just take what we need in an object pool and we don't need them, we just despawn them or just put them back in the pool. I don't want to dig deeper into the details, but this is how spawners work. Let's have a look at how I spawn enemies. Here we have a spawner with a detection radius. When we enter this radius, which is represented by this green sphere, the spawner will spawn the enemy set in the spawner script randomly on the location set by these targets. The red ones are the targets that will spawn the mercenary guards. The yellow ones are for the torchbearers and the purple one is for the acolyte. We also have this interactable object called life essence that spurts out life essence particles from the trees. We can spawn them too just like the enemies using this spawn target. Alright, let's test the spawner. As we approach the green spawn radius, you can see the enemies are being spawned to the scene. Basically, I just move the object's position to their respective spawn targets, then activate the game object. This in turn activates all the scripts and components that run the game object. So it's that simple. We take enemies from the pool of enemies and place them on the targets. And if you don't need them, we put them back to the pool. Now let's test the spawning, or putting them back to the pool. Let's eliminate all enemies first to test them despawning later on. Basically, despawning them means that we will deactivate them and move them back to the object pool for later use. So in essence, an object pool is just like a cabinet of game objects where we pull objects from when we need them and return them once we no longer need them in our scene, saving a lot of resources and increasing performance. Alright, let's move away from the corpses and see if the objects despawn. Alright, it's working. By the way, if you haven't, we are already live on Steam and you can already wishlist Wisplight. Our goal is to reach 10,000 wishlists to help us get our game pushed to many people on launch date. Wishlisting our game will help us small indies reach a wider audience. Also, we have a community in Discord and we'll soon be doing our first combat demo, as soon as all combat mechanics are completed and polished. I'd like to thank my patrons for supporting development of Visplight. Developing this game full-time with zero funding is tough. Your support made us this far in the journey. So yeah, that's about it for spawners and how I utilize basic object pooling ideas. In our next day vlog, we will talk more in-depth details on object pooling and how I manage to use very little game objects in my game to help optimize it. Till next time. I'm rattling for him!
Keep at it! 